a hearing with Laura and Reggie Hoff and the Humane Society about a dog named uh, Sadie. So, uh, would you like to go first, uh, presenting your case? I certainly will. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Michelle Ostrander. I'm here representing the Humane Society. Um, who you should will... probably sit down so you're picked up on the mics. Oh, sorry. I'm so used to standing, you know. Um, so um, my first witness is uh, Karen Baker. You want to make an opening statement or we just get into it? Well, I, I can. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward matter in our opinion. Sadie is a lovely dog. She's not vicious. She's not mean. But she likes to go on walkabout and she doesn't stay put. And that is a real problem because she lives very close to 140. She appears in the sheets at Westminster regularly, not in the sheets, I don't know that she <laughs> is actually a customer, but uh, there's a lot of information that that's nearby to where she lives and she gets out of her house and she comes visiting which if frankly, if she lived in the middle of Northwest Carroll County next to nobody, would probably not be a problem. But she doesn't. She lives very near to 140. There's a, a whole series of photographs taken by a bunch of different people of her in this parking lot. Anyone who has driven past that sheets knows that it is a very busy place. And there's a lot of people on 140 zooming along at 50 miles an hour. Some of them pulling into that parking lot where there sometimes is a dog. She is quite literally an accident waiting to happen, both for her and for possibly a dozen and a half people who cram into each other trying to avoid her on 140, which is the, the basic reason why she just needs to be rehomed, in our opinion, and not be allowed to reside where she does because she, she just keeps getting out. And that's a violation of the animal control ordinance. And that's what I intend to show through uh, Humane Society employees to the board. All right, Ms. Hoff, do you want to uh, make an opening statement to the board? Um, my name now is this Laura. isn't testimony, this oh, is the opening statement. Yeah, I know. <coughs> Laura Huff. Um, Sadie is my dog. She lives with the goats. She's more of a <coughs> livestock guard dog than a actual pet. And yes, I know she's been getting out. It all started a while ago when kids at Cheetahs and employees decided they were going to feed her and she lost training of what she was supposed to do. She jumped the fed, f fence to get snacks. She, that was better than the dog food that I was giving her. So I fixed the fence several times trying to get her to, <coughs> to stay in and she, every time she decided to find another way or someone let her out or something like that. We, I have pictures here that we'll get into that but I believe what we did, and I have pictures of everything of how we did it, and got her dog cage to put her in half the time, and the other time she'd be paroling with the goats, because that goats is her life. That's what she's always been with. And yes, I know she was out at Cheetahs, but she's never been on 140. In the parking lot, what? All right, uh, I'll go ahead with your case, uh, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> um, do you do you swear? <coughs> you no, we haven't really done. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. My first witness is Karen Baker. Um, I mean, I guess we could do it. It is entirely up to you. All right, everybody, stand up. Everybody's going to be a witness. Stand up. I'll, I'll give the oath. Miss Huff, you're gonna you're gonna need to stand. Up. Oh. All right. Do you swear? Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. I do. All right. Thank you. 
Ms. Baker, would you give your name and address for the board, please? Karen Baker, 2517 Littlestown Pike, Westminster, Maryland, 21158. And is that the location of the Humane Society and the offices thereof? Yes. How long have you been with the Humane Society? Uh, 16 or 17 years. And what is your current position? I'm the executive director. In connection with that, I know the answer to this. Are you familiar with Sadie? I am. Um, how did you become familiar with this situation? There, um, in our normal course of business, we monitor social media. Uh, we also were receiving multiple calls about Sadie. Um, and normally when we have repeat offenders of the law or repeat problem situations, it comes up for discussion with me. Okay. Um, and when you say discussion, is that with you and your animal control officers? Yes. When you get these calls, what is the protocol? What, what happens when a call comes in? When we receive a call, um, first of all, we make sure it's a current situation if someone's going to be dispatched immediately. If it is not a current situation, meaning the dog is no longer out or the violation is no longer occurring, we make sure we have a witness that is willing to testify. Okay. So, we, so Sadie came to your attention this way. Um, you mentioned monitoring Facebook. I'm going to show you a series of photographs. Actually, I guess they're technically screenshots. So they're copies of a number of screenshots that came into your office. Um, is that correct? Correct. And what, did, what do most of them show? They show the dog known as Sadie that's currently in our custody out uh, near 140 at the Sheets and other locations. Um, here's one of our officer trying to catch Sadie. Uh, multiple dates and times. And you indicated that you keep these records as part of your standard protocol at the Humane Society. Correct. Okay. I'm, I haven't labeled these, but I would like to introduce them. Okay. Okay. I guess they would be Humane Society one, unless you want me to label them all individually. That's, I would, that's fine. I that's would fine. call them Humane Society one. Did you show those to them? I have not yet. Oh, I've already seen them. Okay. Well, look at them anyway, because these are the ones that I'm that I'm putting in. <laughs> well, for purposes of the hearing, you have a, you're entitled to see yes, what's, what's entered in the what's being entered. sheets so far uh, to the best of your knowledge has Sadie ever 
Ever frequented other department stores? Uh, she was brought to us in 2022, picked up in the Target parking lot, which is across 140. When a dog is off its own property, what are the legal consequences for that? Is that a violation of the animal control ordinance? It is. It is a violation of 95A, which is the restraint law. And um, it can be enforced with fines and criminal citations. <coughs> Mr. Dixon, may I ask you a, a, a technical question? I have a copy of that section of the code, but I'm not sure if the board also has it. There's no point in me giving it to them if they also have it, but I can give it to them if they want it. Yeah. <laughs> so this, I guess, would be Humane Society 2. And actually, before I, before I offer these, let me ask one more, and then I'll bring them both at the same time. Um, <coughs> so you referred to the restraint law. I'm showing you a copy of 90.05. Is that the ordinance that you are referring to? Correct. And, um, and what is A? Would you just read A and B f for the record? Sure. Uh, a states the owner of a dog shall keep the dog under restraint or effective control at all times. And 5B states the owner of an animal shall prevent the animal except a cat from leaving the owner's property unattended or unrestrained. And there's another section that I'm showing you, which is 90.15. And what is the caption on that, please? That is declaring an animal to be a public nuisance or vicious. And is that also um, what the Sadie has been <laughs> declared? Correct. Due to, due to the <coughs> number of um, situations that Sadie has been in, uh, we declared her to be a public nuisance. I'm going to show you these two. Just, you probably are already familiar mm -hmm. with them, but there they are. Want to make it exhibit two? I would, please. Thank you. Okay. And as a result of these various things to which you have testified, did you send? A letter to Laura and Reggie Hoff dated February 16th, 2024? Yes. I'm showing you that letter. Is that a copy of the letter you sent? Yes. And what does it provide? Uh, this notifies the owners of the dog that the dog has been declared a public nuisance. We also notified them that the dog was in our shelter and of their right to appeal that decision. Do you know how the dog came to be in your shelter at that point? The dog was picked up by a good Samaritan and brought into the shelter. We already have those. So is this, a, is this a copy of the letter that you sent? It is. I'm going to ask that this also be introduced as Humane Society 3. I know that the Hawks have seen it. So 
You have declared Sadie a public nuisance. <coughs> if the board upholds this decision, what is the next step? What are the plans for Sadie? We would send Sadie into a private rescue group that could rehome her in a um, more suitable place, more suitable placement for Sadie. But she would not be put down? No. Those are all the questions I have for Ms. Baker. All right, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hoff, do you have any questions for Ms. Baker based on her testimony? All right, board members, do you have any questions for Ms. Uh, Baker? Ms. Ms. Baker, no. you did say that Sadie would not be euthanized, is that correct? She would not. So where would she be held um, if you decided, if we decided that uh, Ms. Huff would not get Sadie back? We would then um, send her to a private rescue group that could um, find suitable placement for her. So she would be rehomed. I have a question uh, just about these violations with uh, <clears throat> 90.05. It says um, there's fencing violations in case in good repair, and that wasn't part of this issue, correct? It's not the fencing. A lot. She goes over, goes under. We have, um, I know our officers have worked with the Hoffs on multiple occasions making recommendations as to how to fix the fencing and it whether it just wasn't properly done mm -hmm. or she found another way it's clearly not effective right but there was no violation of section F I believe there's been warnings but oh, I, warnings I, about it okay okay can I say something to that nope not your turn okay. yeah. I don't know how that works I don't know how this works so you you have Ms. Baker you you have been over her property and, and examined it. I have not related to this case, but I have been on the property. And what you, kind of fencing is it? That I believe is a wire in the back. But Officer Durr could testify because I'm not as familiar with the back. I've never been at the very back of the property. And I've only how, seen it from a distance. What's the area we're talking? How, how much is fenced in? I believe it's a five-acre property, but not all of it is fenced. How much is fenced in for the goats and the dog? That's not something I could answer. That would probably the Huffs could answer that for you. Am I the answer? <laughs> no. <laughs> You'll have another chance after the board finishes their questions. Uh, can... Can you answer the question? No, no, no. We'll get to her when, oh, when well, she, after she testifies, not right now. If I can't get an answer to my first question. How much is fenced? We can get the answer when Huff's testifies. Okay. I'll let you know in a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right. Save that question. <laughs> I will. Ms. Baker, it was um, when you look at the Facebook pages, I've I'm not sure if it's relevant, but I think there were 13 sightings by witnesses or something of that nature. Is that what you go on as a violation? No, we, we go on a, a couple things. First of all, we like to have some guilty verdicts and the Huffs have paid fines. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to go with witnessed sightings, but also we take into account the risk to human life or the risk to other animals. And due to the proximity to 140, that weighs on that decision. Mm -hmm. With witness sightings, um, it's necessary that they testify or is it just Facebook is enough? That was one of my questions. Uh, no, no, Facebook is not That's enough. That's what I thought. Okay. Facebook is not enough. Okay. That, would, that would not hold up in a criminal okay. court unless the person who made the post and actually took the picture is willing to testify in court. Okay, so for to have a something like a social media uh, be evidence, 
there would have to be some proof other than just somebody wrote something on Facebook because we really wouldn't know what dog it is. Correct. So if you have the picture and they're willing to testify, okay. Correct. Thank you. So there was evidence that this dog, can you confirm there was evidence this dog was down at the MVA? I am not familiar with that incident. Okay. One of the other officers, maybe. Okay. But it was at Target. I know that the first time the dog was brought into the shelter by a Good Samaritan, they picked the dog up in the Target parking lot. That was their testimony. <clears throat> Any more questions, uh, board members? None here. All right, now, Mr. and Mrs. Huff, you can, based on the questions and answers that you heard, you can ask uh, Ms. Baker questions. Um, I do have a question about, you said the fencing violations, or fencing, that was something about there was um, warnings about fencing. I've never got warnings about fencing. Adam was in... When Adam came, I don't, he's not here, but I'm guessing his name's Adam, right? Adamson. Adamson, sorry. Um, he was out in my pasture for two hours with me and Ellie. Went around the whole premises. He said he didn't find nothing wrong with the fencing. There's no spots where she could dig out. That he believes that she's jumping over to put more fencing up. We did. It, oh, it's six feet tall. But there is lots of places that's way over my head that's eight, nine foot tall. And you can see in the pictures that I have here. <coughs> and to your question was, how much is fenced in for? You're supposed dogs? to ask questions now, Miss. Oh, Hoff. okay. All right. <laughs> um, I've never did this. <coughs> um, that's all my questions. <laughs> yeah, board members. Oh, and at the time you said that she was um, at uh, Target parking lot in 2022. She was not my dog then. She was, she was on the property, but the other boy, Corey Hawk, is the one that got her from Texas. He said he didn't want her anymore, so I took her over then. Correct. Public nuisance is specific to the dog, not I the owner. I get that, but I'm just yeah. letting you know, at that time, she was not in my name when she was found at Target. That's Bo all board I members have any other questions? For Ms. Baker? For Ms. Baker, yes. I would next call Dawn Kenna Andrews. Andrew? I don't know if I put an S on the end of your name. No S. Okay. All right. And are you employed by the Humane Society of Carroll County? Yes. How long have you been employed there? 12 years. And what is your role there? Um, I'm the animal control administrator. I take all incoming calls, dispatch to all officers, oversee um, the officers day to day, all the admin part. Uh, so you are not a, a field employee, if you will. You don't. You're not out in one of the trucks. Not on a daily basis. No. Okay. Um, but you are the phone call taker. Uh, what has been your experience with phone calls about Sadie? Um, when she's out, we get multiple calls from multiple people um, explaining she's out. It's usually two or three on average. And then what do you do? Um, then I send the closest officer to patrol for her. When they arrive, do they call you? Do they make reports? How does that work? They call out that they are in the area searching for her, um, and then they do. Um, have a report that is tied to that patrol. Okay. In connection with, with that sort of patrolling, uh, do any of your officers regularly patrol the Sheets area or stay there or anything of that nature to ascertain what Sadie's up to? Yes. Um, I ask them to take their lunch at Sheets. I ask them to, when they have reports to write, to shit in the Sheets parking lot. Um, to which one of my officers did see Sadie off the property sitting there writing a report. Okay. Do you, do you, but you don't prepare these reports or do you? Only if I'm actively involved with the, okay. the call on the road. 
Do your animal control officers report to you, or what is what is that situation? Do they check in? Yes. At the beginning of the day and the end of the day. So you're fairly familiar with um, with Sadie's patterns. Yes. Would that be a fair statement? I don't think I have anything else. I just have um, Ms. Kenna Andrews available to answer questions. I put an S on your name again. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Huff, that. do you have any questions for Ms. Andrew? Mm, no. All right, board members, do you have any questions? I have a question. What you said was you get two to three calls. Did that mean per multiple. incident? Yeah, like multiple. she's at wherever, mm -hmm. and not just one person will call, but two to three just yep, public members are that worried that they call every yep. time? That's interesting. Yeah, okay. so it would be um, a couple times was employees that called. Um, the doctor's office next door called. Okay. Um, I believe they called a couple times. Right. Um, but it was always more than one call okay and they're worried that not that the dog was behaving aggressively but that it might be injured by a car mm -hmm. just that she was it's mostly of the public is worried mm -hmm. that she's going to be injured her by safety. a car got it Ms. andrews do you do you know or off the top of your head when the calls started coming in approximately like what year um i believe it was most, i can answer that with the board's indulgence, uh, <laughs> our next witness right. has a lot of paper. Um, the first patrol was June 27th of 23. June 27th of 23. Prior to that, you had not received a call? Um, for a patrol, I'd have to look at the actual report okay. um, to make sure that there wasn't somebody who actually called in one to testify. The first I was just trying to establish when this first call started coming For a in. patrol was June 27th. Okay. But just so the record's clear, she was, the dog was found at the Target parking lot in 2022. Correct. That was somebody who brought her into the shelter. Any other questions? I have none. But isn't that superfluous to this whole conversation? What's that? Because the dog didn't belong to them in 2022? Okay. It's still give it, on the, give it's it the still weight the that dog. you want to give. It's on the dog, not the owner. The, um, yeah, the I mean, they weren't the owner in 2022. But, that, that didn't matter, though, that it's on the dog. The nuisance ch charges on the dog, not the owner. Okay, give it give it the weight that you want to give it. Okay. <laughs> it was that correct? It's on the dog, not the owner. Correct. All right. I don't think there's any further questions. Uh, I have nothing further for this one. Okay. And next, I would call Angela Durr. <coughs> And Mr. Are you employed by the Humane Society of Carroll <laughs> County? Yes, I am. Since you have it emblazoned uh, on, on your wardrobe, uh, what, is, uh, what is your role there? I'm an animal control officer. How long have you been an animal control officer? About 10 months. Okay. Oh, so you're new. Yeah. So in connection with that, have you had calls about Sadie? Yes. Have you gone out about Sadie? I have. Tell us what you've done about Sadie? Um, I frequently patrol the Finksburg area. Um, it's kind of my designated area um, from 97 South towards Finksburg. Um, and 
We routinely receive calls about Sadie being off property. Um, one instance in particular, um, I was asked to patrol the area um, on my off time when I was um, not on any active calls. So I was sitting in the Sheets parking lot filling in some reports, just kind of looking around and looking down at my computer doing it you know, some typing and I look up and she was right in front of my truck. Um, so I of course got out and attempted to catch her. Um, she is like the Huff set up and a livestock guardian dog. She's not really a pet. So she's very evasive um, and was very difficult to catch. Um, I was able to snap some pictures of her uh, before the Huff family realized she was missing and called her back to the property um, at which time she was to safety, so I left the, the parking lot. And did you make a report from that? Yes, I did. I'm showing you a report that's captioned activity card. Uh, what's the date on that? It's January 18th. Okay, is that, is that the incident we were talking about? Yes. Okay. It's not here. Right, so actually this is somebody else. Shut it This is the incident card. Could we get your last name again real quick? We didn't catch it up here. Dur, D is in David, E-R-R. -R. Thank you. Did you issue a violation um, notice to Mr. and Mrs. Hoff after uh, that incident that you just described? Yes. And what was the violation on that one? What was the fee? Um, oh. This violation was for $50 um, for violations of 90-05A, 90-05B, which are both restraint. Um, 90-09D, which is um, repetitive action, 90-02A and 90-02N for licensing and failure to show licensing. Okay. I'm going to show that, so, and that's dated 118.24. Sadie had no license. No. She didn't have any Had license. she ever had been licensed? Uh, yes, I believe she had licensing prior to this incident. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, what was the next question? I'm waiting. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to introduce all these at once as opposed to three different, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, is that the only violation you've issued or have you issued another violation issued about Sadie? Another violation. This violation, I did not personally see her off the property, but we had two witnesses willing to testify um, that they had seen her off property. And it is, what's the date on that one? That's uh, January 30th. Okay. Thank you. And the mm -hmm. violation was, again, for 90-02A, um, 90-02G, which is licensing, uh, 90-05A, 05B for restraint, and 90-09D for, mm -hmm. again, repetitive action okay. for $250, which all the fines have been. Uh -oh. Four? Okay. There's three. But I mean, they're all exhibit four. The, yes. Okay. Officer 
Victor, have you have been out to the Hoff property? I have. have you not? I have. On more than one occasion? Yes. Okay. Uh, could you dis describe the the fencing and the size of the fenced-in area to the best of your knowledge, knowing that you are not a surveyor? <laughs> Right. Um, so the fencing for the area that Sadie is typically kept in is um, it's chain link fence. It is well over my head, um, probably at least six feet, um, if not higher in other spots. Um, the area, I'm not very good at area, <laughs> um, but I would say, I mean, it's a, it's a decent sized area, probably, I don't, I don't know, I would be, don't guess. I can't guess. <laughs> but definitely the, the, the fencing is chain link. Uh, it appeared to be in good structure when I was there. Um, and uh, it's at least six feet tall. And yet despite this apparently legitimate fencing, this dog uh, goes on walkabout. Yes, she does. Other than rehoming her to a different place. Do you know of any other ways to keep this dog on the site? Um, we have talked, Laura and Ellie and Reggie and I have all talked about um, installing coyote rails, which if you're not familiar, are basically uh, PVC piping that goes across the top of your fence. It is held on by cable so that mm -hmm. they can't jump over, mm -hmm. theoretically. Um, obviously it's going to be a big financial burden um, doing things like that. <laughs> We've also talked about the invisible fencing. Um, I'm not sure, given Sadie's personality, if that would really phase her because she's kind of a, she gets tunnel vision when she wants something, she just does it, um, kind of hard-headed personality. Um, so I'm not sure that that would be beneficial. Um, We've talked, I know at one point they were keeping her restrained by a cable, um, which there are provisions on that with the law. Um, also, it's not good for her mental status to be cabled. Um, I know they were having issues with her eating and things like that um, and getting depressed. So um, really the only option at this point that I can think of would be trying out the coyote rails. Or perhaps having her live not immediately adjacent to 140. What's at the bottom of the chain link fence? Um, it just goes down to the ground. So is she s just sliding under it? I think in some areas it's buried, but I don't think she's sliding under the fence. I think she's going over. She's climbing it? You think she's climbing it? I, I don't know if she's climbing or just jumping it. She's a big dog. It's six foot though, right? So it hasn't been determined. Right, I've never all seen this, her how get out. There's, Correct. Okay, there's no video or the owners did not happen to walk out and see her do it. So you, it's hard to fix something you don't know how they're doing it. <laughs> right, right. And right. I've Got also it. encouraged them to put um, like trail cams out to see like yeah. cameras out just to see what's happening. I know that they have suspected people like foul play um, because they are right there against the Sheets parking lot. Um, you know, if people are letting her out, um, you know, things like that. I've encouraged them to put cameras out. So. Okay, but to our knowledge, no one is coming over, opening their fence and letting her out. We don't, no. Okay. We don't know. Is there a gate on that side of the fence? I don't think so. Okay. I have no other questions at this point. I do. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, the, you guys say that two to three phone calls you get every time she is out. Now my question is to you. You were there about ducks, and I was across the street catching ducks, and me and well, we were together, mm -hmm. Ellie and my son Hunter, and you got a call on your radio saying that Sadie was out. Well. That's when I had enough <coughs> of that. And uh, we looked over the hill after they said oh, she's in, and she's in. Right. So, yes, they get two to three phone calls a day, but sometimes 
They are fake calls, and she witnessed it herself. And then my other question to you is, you have walked with me and Ellie around that whole farm, the whole farm, and have you ever seen a spot where she could get out? Because every time that she's out, it's pretty funny, I never see her get out. And this has been happening for a while, I admit it. But every time she comes back to me, she doesn't jump back in or climb back in. Me or Ellie or one of the kids have to let her back in through the gate to go back to her goats. So if I knew how she was jumping, I would fix it or whatever. But I've ne we never seen it. Have you ever seen her? All right, uh, board members, do you have any questions? No. Okay. I have no other witnesses. All right, so we're accepting uh, Humane <coughs> Society exhibits one through four in the evidence. And that's your case? Uh, that is my case. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Hoff, you get to put on your case and give testimony, whatever testimony you want to give. Okay. All right. Okay, let me get my dating right. In July of 2022, we bought a goat herd from Texas that when we got there, <coughs> they, it was war goats, by the way. When we got there, they said that the dog goes with her. I wasn't the only one that purchased the goats. We kind of split it between the kids and, and all, our kids. And our friend Corey, because I really didn't, well, our friend Corey said he would take the dog, but it would stay at our house because he lived with us at the time. So he worked with her and worked with her, and we never had a problem. We realized that on 4th of July, that when the um, fireworks, and that's when she was out at 2022, because we didn't know that she was afraid of loud bangs and noises, and she bolted. But we didn't see her bolt. <coughs> and, um, and, okay, so after the 2022 one, that she was found at Target, all the way up until June of 2023, we've never had a problem. We start having problems when there was kids coming down on our property, letting our cattle, show cattle out, um, making animal noises, barking, like young kids sitting at the sheets of parking lot is what I'm saying. Um, pretty much, <coughs> Then, to this, even they got her, and they still are doing the same things. I still get calls. I still get um, animal control still comes to me. And um, it, in June of 2023, when Sheetas had employees, two younger kids would go to Sadie's fence line of our fence is, you say 100 feet away from the dumpster? About 200. About 200 feet away from the dumpster at Sheetz's. And there was two young kids at 2, 3 in the morning doing the night shift would go out there to smoke. And then they realized that there was a dog in the pasture. Well, I'm guessing they didn't know that she was guarding. And then that's when she started jumping out there's many people on Facebook saying that they would feed her. When she was well fed and get fed, she gets fed twice a day. Plus, I would give her like chicken or other things to keep her acclimated it onto our property and not have to go off to get other sources. But you know, anybody likes 
Scooby Snacks over anything. Do you got anything to write this second? Because I'm going back and forth. No, not really. Can I call a witness? Sure. This is Jessica Granger. This is her daughter, Rhiannon Granger. They board um, goats that Sadie does watch over and livestock like cattle at my property because unfortunately they don't have room to board their set up, have it at their own house. Morning. 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 Um, Sometimes she has a hard time getting her thoughts together. So yes. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, also, I, like I said, I board there. Sadie watches my goats. Um, what she said is correct, that she's never, other than the 4th of July incident, they've never had a problem with Sadie getting out up until that point. Um, I do have lots of statements from online. Um, I've tried to call and, and speak with animal control myself and ask if they understand a great... Sorry, my dad has the ability to break through on my phone. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so um, to ask if they understand a great Pyrenees breed and the things that they're capable of. Um, and I actually got asked, you know, what business of it is mine? Uh, well, she guards my goats, it is my business. But it's clearly not, you know, if they're worried about what people are saying online too, why is it their business as well if they're not actually witnessing the dog getting out because they're getting <coughs> fake calls? I have, um, Hmm. Let me see if I can find it. <coughs> Statements. Uh, I printed out one because if I printed out more, all of them, there would be hundreds of pages um, of people saying they're just going to call the Humane Society to make a complaint about the dog, even though they haven't witnessed the dog being out, um, just because they, they feel that she would just be better somewhere else and they're just trying to cause a problem. Um, I've had statements here from Facebook of people threatening to kidnap her, come onto the property and take her, um, give her some snacks, put them in their truck. Uh, dog napping would be a blessing for this girl, like uh, constant people threatening to cause problems for them. Um, these are all statements from people admitting to feeding her cheeseburgers, snacks, every time they're at Cheats, every single time they are at Cheats. And if you take a livestock guardian dog that is meant to guard goats and you start feeding them, they're going to go for the other food source because other farmers in the county have had this problem that live in Manchester, that there's a farm behind 7-Eleven that their Great Pyrenees will get out off the property and come up to where the food is, where McDonald's are, 7-Eleven, all of that, because people up there were feeding it. So they've had these problems. It's not just a problem with them. It's a problem consistently with farm dogs. Great Pyrenees tend to wander. Um, they have the ability to wander. Like Ms. Durr said, you know, invisible fencing may not work because she'll probably go right through it. Um, so if you want, I can read a statement from the Great Pyrenees Rescue of Montana about Pyrenees behavior and about their ability to climb and jump fences even if they're beyond six feet high. Um, Pyrenees are roamers by nature. They think the entire world is their property line. Um, they require secure fencing, at least five foot tall, which theirs meets that. Um, their independence and protective instincts and self-confidence causes these dogs to seek out danger in order to keep threats from their home and family. Pyrenees do not worry about getting lost or hurt and they have no sense of vulnerability and will put their lives on the line to protect you. Their keen sense of hearing and smell allows them to sense potential predators long before you know they're around. In their effort to protect you, they can roam up to 10 miles. No Pyrenees has 100% recall, especially when their instincts tell them they must protect you. <clears throat> when outside the yard, oh, let me get to the right spot here, sorry. Um, I'm sorry, I must have missed my spot here. Anyway, the point is they will wander. So even if she goes to a new home, she's going to wander. It doesn't matter where she's at. She's going to go beyond her fence line and wander. She's not the only Great Pyrenees in the county that wanders or that people have a problem with, but most of people in this county understand farmers and understand the want to be like, okay, we'll just get her back home. These people are literally trying to kidnap her and cause problems and cause things like this to happen by calling in fake complaints or saying they're just gonna call the Humane Society to make a complaint because they want to, not because shit, they're actually encountering her, encountering her with an issue. Um, there is constant harassment and bullying to Mr. and Mrs. Hoff and others on the, on the Facebook page. They're doxing their personal information. 
Um, they're doxing their address, phone numbers, names. Th that puts their children's lives in danger, not just the dogs. Like, it, it is insane the amount of, I've actually spoke with a police officer and we're looking into seeing how harassment charges can be filed because of the amount. There is posts with hundreds of comments with their information. There's some that got deleted because somebody told them to delete it. Doxing can cause charges. So not all of them, it, it, not all of it is on there anymore. Um, oh, thank you, here it is. Um, all kinds of stuff. Like, this goes beyond just Sadie. This goes beyond just her, you know, her getting out every now and then. When they're doing everything they can, like, like you said, there's, if, the, if we don't know where the problem is, we don't know how to fix it. Um, the last place that, that they made the fence higher, she didn't get out for two weeks. So, all, and then all of a sudden she's out and she's in their custody, which is odd because she, if she's getting out consistently like this, why all of a sudden was there a two week window when there was no problems and there was a problem? And didn't you say somebody went and got her microchip? Oh, um, they checked her microchip. They checked her microchip, okay. And then instead the, the um, vet office said, well, we can give it to the owner and they were like, no, we're taking it to the Humane Society. So they're like, just trying to cause a problem here at this point. Um, I don't think whether she goes to a rescue or to a different home, it's gonna make a difference in, in her behavior. When you're doing everything you can, Great Pyrenees by nature are just gonna wanna do what they wanna do, period. But if people are feeding her, and also her being in the kennel at the Humane Society, you don't want to kennel a Pyrenees. They can call, cause them to go kennel, train, uh, kennel crazy. Uh, putting them on a lead can cause, it would be bad for the mental state, as Ms. Durr said. Um, and it's honestly bad, it's worse for her in there than it would be for her on the farm, period. Um, at this point, we don't know what her, tra her training could be completely gone by this point. Will she even want to be with the goats at this point? because she's been locked up for so long. And it's, it, it, as the Humane Society keeping her locked up like this is actually failing the dog and not helping the dog. Failing the dog miserably as a breed and as a livestock, livestock guardian dog. Um, I'd be happy to give you all of this if you want. Where did they, did they come from the Westminster online? Yes. All of this came from, there's, there is several posts that with hundreds of comments. I've had people tag me and harass me about it because I've been on there trying to explain the situation and defend them, and then people just get nasty, and then I just lose my temper at that point. Did anyone honest. from the Humane Society see those posts? You did see them. Those are the ones that were submitted. Okay. It goes. They didn't submit all of them, though. She's talking about the net. She's talking about the nasty posts. It's, it's comments on those posts, which weren't familiar. But you can collaborate that, right? How do you have a picture of where she? made the fence larger or taller? Um, oh, yeah, I have it over yeah, here. <coughs> Can I bring it to you? Sure. sure. Okay. I, I would like to just see oh, them before they're introduced. That's okay. No, I mean, do you have just, just one each? Or you don't have two? No, I didn't, oh, okay. know, I didn't know I needed two. No, that's fine. I was You're just good. not going to slow yeah. you down. Pretty much what's in the pictures is <coughs> Um, the dog cage that we have built that she will not get out of. Okay. Um, that is, <clears throat> these, she'll be in with the goats as well. Uh huh. And then this is the fencing. That's the up top off the roof. So she'll it. have that shelter. <coughs> goats. And that's the dog cage. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Oops. No, 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 I said I could see them oh, from okay. there. Oh, sorry. Okay, we'll make this Huff exhibit uh, one. Uh, did you want the comments as well? If you want to give them to us, uh, okay. that's fine. I will be happy to, so you can see what I'm talking about. Those are just a couple examples. There's hundreds of these on all of the posts. Hundreds. Why are they like this? And there's... Oh, because I did picture for them, that's why. Do that. Do that. Okay, I'll just make all these half That's exhibit right. too. And then I have some pictures of her doing her natural habitat with the goats. <coughs> um, let me. And with my children. This is, Those these are, are all different things. Yes. All right, I'm just going to put them all together. There's two kids in my household that can she changed her mind. touch this dog because her nature is to be with the goats. 
my niece and my three-year-old. There's the. Thank you. So. I'll make this three. Did you get a chance to see these? Yes, I did. This is going to be exhibit. Um, oh, say you my my child. Oh, okay. And the goats. All right. Um, well, we'll stipulate that I'm Sadie sorry. hangs around with the goats. <laughs> yes, she hangs with the goats, and there's only two kids on oh, at my household can touch her. Fancy no, hands. Six no. feet. And a number of pictures. The kids um, are. Ada and Emma. Yes. So, is, is this pile of sitting right close to that fence? She could get up on there and. Get over. Sure. If she's kept in here, I'm not sure. Which oh, she's in here. Yeah, I'm not sure which side she's in. Yeah. Here's two and three. Mm. Has the Humane Society gotten calls from a Manchester dog up in Manchester? I I don't know. Let's see. Okay, but you you don't remember any call from Manchester. Would, would you like her to come up and identify herself for the record, or are we not That's concerned about that? All of this either. random talking. We already have her. Okay. Already no. No. Andrews, right? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, no, but I just, um, however Mr. Dixon wants to try and do it. <laughs> these, these are somewhat informal. All right, do you finish your testimony, uh, Ms. Oh, yes. Granger? Yes, sir. And let me see. You're, you, how do you spell your last name? G R A N G E R. And you said your first name's Jessica. Jessica. All right, Ms. Huff, do you have any other witnesses? I'm good. I'm okay. All right. So that's your case. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you need me to um, show you, if you have any questions about those pictures of where she would be kept. And because it's a couple different angles, so if you need me to this is three. let you know where I can do that. Because it's um a couple different things on there. And can I can I say something? Um are you testifying? No, I was answering his question from earlier about the fence side. Are you testifying, Mr. Huff? Um the fence is about five hundred foot by five hundred a square five hundred foot all the way around is what the fence is. And to clarify what Ms. Durr said, it's similar to chain link fence, but it is not chain link fence. It is two by four inch welded wire, six foot tall, all the way around, on post, and some of it is buried in the ground, and some of it's got boards on the ground that we dip That's where it's like it. tree roots or something like that where we couldn't get it in the ground. Because, and that was put up for the goats, and we got Nigerian goats, and Nigerian goats are escape artists, and they go under the fence. They don't jump, they're only two foot tall. They don't go over the fence, they go under the fence. You can have a little tiny hole, and they'll squeeze their big body through it. They're about like a rat. And um, so, and it's one section of fence, was a little bit shorter, because we had a get, uh, panel with a gate in it there, and we thought she might have been getting out there, so we made it taller. And then a couple of other sections was uh, shorter, so we made that taller. But she is not going under the fence. She goes, she completely clears the fence like a deer. I mean, what can- But you haven't seen her do that? We never seen her do it, no. So we don't know if she's doing it. No, that. we don't know. And, uh, <laughs> and yes, the people goes to Sheetz's and <coughs> they stand up there, they smoke her dope, whatever they do, and she gets irritated. And she's doing her job because they're not supposed to be there. And the dog is doing her job. She is a livestock guardian dog. We don't consider her even as a dog. We consider her, her as, as livestock because she lives with the goats. 
She's got a shelter that she goes in. She gets fed, everything. When the, we don't even physically take her to the vet, we call the livestock vet out to the farm to give her medicine or to do anything. Who, who is that vet? Kay Wagner. Or Sarah, or Sarah Link. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I got to say. Can I say one more thing? Sorry about that. I just remembered something. Go ahead. And yes, we did get fines, three hundred and fifty dollars worth of fines that we did pay, that we did already pay. So we're not trying to say we're not guilty of or not admitting <laughs> anything, but we did pay the fines because we want her back with her livestock because. We got a problem with turkey turkey vultures, black-headed turkey vultures. We got a big problem with it, and um, and when she's in the field, she keeps them away from the goats. And they black-headed turkey vultures will kill a little goat. They will just go up to it and kill it. And that's one reason why we need her back there to keep them out of her field, or to keep the turkey buzzards out of the field. There's also foxes and coyotes in town as well. <coughs> yes. And we have, we have, before we got Sadie, we have had a couple goats that the turkey vultures has killed. I've seen it with my eyes. I, I witnessed it myself. And that's why we need her back to try to keep the turkey vultures away. And we took and bought a new kennel we're going to put her in that, and she's in another enclosed area. So if she would get out of kennel, she's still in another area. So we could get her back. We also can't protect against the turkey vultures because they're a protected species. It's a $15,000 fine to kill them. So it's not like we can handle that problem ourselves. Ms. Ostreicher, do you have any questions for the, the, the witnesses? Ostrander. I'm sorry. I'm not a judge. <laughs> I, 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 uh, got you, I got you mixed up. <laughs> you are not the first. Uh, no, I don't think I have any questions for these, these folks. So Sadie lives her entire life outside. Correct. And she's well maintained with different places where she can go in. She she gets, the pen gets cleaned on a daily basis and fresh bedding put in. We try to do that. Fresh bedding puts in every day, but we clean it two to three days. Has she ever been out at night? Um, there's, there's times when I went and checked the, the goats at because we had babies born, she was out, yes. She was out of your property at nighttime? No, she was out. See, she's only out of the property if she goes back that way. It's, okay. She was in our five acres. Okay. And then I would put her back in the fence. So there's never been a sighting of Sadie at night then on the Sheets parking lot or anything? Okay. And that's why I was going to put her sometimes in the cage and sometimes out of the cage. Like she has where I can shut her in, the pictures that I've showed you. <clears throat> I have a question for um, animal control. Can I ask that? Yep. Now? Sure. Which uh, which one? We'll bring her back. Any, up here. Anyone, anyone who knows. I'm a little unclear as to the date, the last time Sadie was brought in by somebody. Why don't you come up here so you knew. Was it month. January 30th or? She was brought to us on February the 16th. On February 16th. And so that would be a, about a month. And how do you keep Sadie on the Humane Society property? So Sadie is in a kennel um, and I personally 
we don't, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, we do have a play yard, um, but it only has about a four foot fence. So she's never um, let off of a lead sure. within our possession um, because that would be awful. <laughs> um, but I have a 30 foot lead that I personally take her out on walks with and I just let her just kind of absorb the outside. Um, I try to do it daily. I was sick most of last week, but, um, and then also she comes in and hangs out within the office on the couch right? Um, a lot. Um, but she's never unsupervised. But otherwise she's in a kennel mm -hmm. and does it have a roof on it? As is a six foot, I'm assuming the humane side, I think it's yes. six feet. So it doesn't have a cover or it does? It's a indoor kennel. Yeah, that's it's when I've covered. seen them, the they could. The outside is, co is still covered. Right, but I inside what I'm, we she can, has not climbed over your six foot fence is all I'm she asking. She has not. We don't, she is in a quarantine kennel, which is a topped kennel. Oh, there is a so top. Her okay. kennel is topped. And then our shelter, our canine staff to give her outings during the day. So she's not in the kennel. She goes to an outside kennel that's also topped. It also has a top. <laughs> Correct. Because we don't put her in a kennel okay. that's not topped. Okay. Okay. So Ms. Hoff, I just have a question for you. So uh -huh. let's just say that you kept the dog. What are you gonna do to keep it in? What's your next step? Um, I showed you, I, I, the pictures. She used, okay, if you look at the one picture of like the top view, she used to be in the whole entire field to mm -hmm. be able to roam. So now we have it um, smaller where she doesn't have so much to, look to see what she can do. And I have the dog cage, a kennel with a top that I can lock her in either during the night or during the day and let her out with the goats. Even if she gets out of the cage, she will still be in another enclosed um, area, structure. And you never, you never put any trail cameras up to see yes, where I she Yes, I did, but did. I've never seen nothing. You never saw where she was getting out? Yep. Jeez, you Danny. And, and <laughs> trail cameras are good, but any motion it will take. And I, I have cats. <laughs> I have all different kinds of things, squirrels. I have everything, but I don't have her. And I thought when... They had her since February the 16th that, I mean, things would go bad, like we wouldn't see animal control, but we've seen them every week. We get calls in all the time, they do, about starving puppies, which they still have yet to find because I don't have puppies. People are now calling CPS on them. The last call was about how they feed their kids raw meat. It's getting ridiculous at this point. It's, it's beyond harassment. Animal control being there twice a week is beyond harassment at this point when the dog, when they have the dog. Animal controls had it for how long? Sadie, for how long? Since February the 16th. Since just February 16th. Yeah. There's a little over a month. Do you take weights when you admit them? And yes, I do not have a current weight on her as of today, though. So you don't know what she weighed when you took her in? She was 80, I don't know if it's on this paper or not. It is not on this paper. I know she was 80 a couple pounds. Has she gained weight since she's been there? I, I was out last week, um, so I don't know. Because when we put her in a closed thing, we have problems with her not eating because she wants, when this all first started, we put her in another cage, in a topped cage, and she did not eat for three days. 
So I had I put her back up with the goats, and she went to eating. Because she got depressed not being with the goats. Yep. I know she is eating, and we've been. Um, I've kept a very close eye with kennel staff personally. Yes. I know Karen also keeps tabs on her, um, just because we know that it can is a concern. Um, and I tell the kennel staff to feed that feed her whatever she'll eat. And I I don't think that she's not eating. She's she's eating. She yeah. And I, we give her yes. treats all the time. Yeah, and kind of we've kind of learned the tricks of what lights her up and what she gets excited about. And so we, <coughs> we make sure that she gets plenty of enrichment so that she does continue to eat and is relaxed. <coughs> all right, uh, I guess it's time for closing statements. So we have a closing. Um, I, th I think so. I think so. This is a difficult situation. I'm not going to suggest it isn't. But there does not seem to be any question that Sadie gets out. And she's not supposed to get out. And more importantly than that is she's getting out by a six-lane highway where people are going 50 miles an hour. She's in a parking lot where people are pulling in at 40 miles an hour, where there are gas tanks, where there are gas trucks. The potential for serious accident is very great at this location. And Sadie seems to be a, a great little dog, not little dog, a great dog, um, who's very enthusiastic about jumping and getting out by the Hoff's testimony. I'm not, no one's challenging. They have tried to keep her in, but they have not been successful. And there's a lot of indication just from the breed type that she's going to continue to do what she's been doing. You're not going to stop people from going to the sheets. You can't close it down or relocate it. So it's there and it's a fact that has to be addressed. In a perfect world, no one at the sheets would ever look at Sadie. And Sadie would be perfectly happy with her goats. But that's not what's happening and there's no reason to think it will continue to happen. She gets out, we don't know how. Coyotes get in, we don't know how. Because that's what animals do. Uh, they're mysterious little critters. But your quest, the, the question before you is whether this dog has, is in violation of the law that requires her to be restrained at all times. She's not. There really is no question about that. So her life, we submit, would, would be much better on a larger property where there's no sheets next door to her, or a 7-Eleven for that matter wherever she would be rehomed, because this is not a problem that's going to resolve itself. And we ask that the board uphold the decision of the uh, Humane Society and have this dog rehomed. All right, Mrs. Huff, do you have a uh, closing argument? Yes. <clears throat> since February the 16th, since they had her, we've been working hard and getting stuff together the pictures I showed you um, the plan is to put her in the kennel during the day why there's busy highway stuff going on and at night and I'm out at least out all hours of the night I'm gonna let her run in with the goats and then if I see if there's any issue I'll put her back in for a little bit but all hours of the nights we're outside birthing goats we have lambs we have pigs we have everything our kids do 4-H and they have dairy goats that's having babies and boar goats that's having babies. So we're up all hours of the night and we're gonna give it our best. We're just, my goats would love to see her back. What did you do before you had Sadie? What protected your goats before I, you? Oh, you didn't have goats? I didn't have anything. Have oh, no, no, we had goats, but we had livestock being killed because of 
I didn't have anything, and there's only so much I can do. So you had predators getting in there yes. and destroying your livestock? Yes. The vultures, foxes. <coughs> All of it. She's been gone a, a month. Have you had anything damaged to your livestock now? No, but the vultures are coming back closer and closer because she's not there to patrol her area. Because well, she'll vulture, bark and she'll bark at them and they fly away. I don't think a vulture is going to get an adult goat, but, but, a, but maybe a, a little kid. Oh, uh, what'd you say? I don't think a vulture is going to get an adult goat, but, but um, certainly They a killed a 300 pounds uh, feeder calf. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've never, I've Went never inside seen the that, barn though. and killed it. Just for the record, what kind of goats are these again? Uh, dairy goats and boar goats. Okay. Show goats. They're all different kinds. Our kids show them. Um, they're Toggenbergs, La Manchas, Alpines, Sonnens, Recorded Grain, Boar okay. goats, Market goats. That The kids, we have six kids, me and Reggie here. <coughs> and then my sister-in-law has two, and they all show the goats and the livestock at the the farm. Okay. In this picture, where is Sadie in this picture? Is that on your property? Can I come closer? Yeah, sure. Uh, that's not Sadie. It's not Sadie? No. There's been confusion about a yellow lab. Everybody keeps calling her a yellow lab because there's a yellow lab that runs around. She's a short hair Pyrenees. She's from Texas, so they adapt to the climate down there. She's not, not a big Sadie fluffy Pyrenees then. like everybody's thinking. If she says it's not, then okay. <clears throat> Just wanted to get it clarified. Okay, uh, d does the board want to go in the back and deliberate? Now, can sure. I get the Why exhibits? Yeah. Can you pass Three, those? Let's see if got you. Thank you. It's for. It should be more than that. The main society has about four. Let's see. Hoff has.
Okay, um, the board has reached a decision and we are very sensitive to how difficult this is for both sides actually. But the decision um, has to be made on two accounts. One is um, the actual regulations in Carroll County and the second is for consideration of the dog. And what we did consider was that according to statistics by the National United States Department of Agriculture and Texas A&M University, what everyone is saying is actually correct is that uh, wandering off the property, whether it's Montana or an urban situation like this, can be a, pro a problem. Uh, usually uh, you hope fences can do it, but in this case they're not. In fact, the statistics show that it's shocking, 40% of flock guards are dead by five years old and 57% have had a fatal accident off the property. So that strongly supports the wandering and what can happen if a dog leaves the property and the fences are not keeping it in. Um, it appears that as uh, looking at this from a behavior point of view with Sadie, you have to go where is the dog want to be that we don't want her to be and it's off the property away from the animals that she should be guarding because this is an incident that's happened over and over and over. I think that there are, um, we're aware that there are a number of concerned citizens and maybe citizens that don't have the best ideas in mind, but it really isn't relevant to where the dog is and that you've tried very hard to keep her on, but she repeatedly leaves. You've come up with other solutions that probably don't seem reasonable to work, such as a flock guard should be with the animals all the time. And if you have a flock guard that needs to be in a kennel or be watched all the time and we don't even know how she's escaping to try and use a method to keep her in, that also becomes a real problem. You know, one of the suggestions could be that there are dogs that will not leave the flock, especially when deterred by a six foot fence um, or maybe where it's buried because we don't know how they're getting out. So there are other animals that we think could do a good job on your property, but this may not be the one. So with the idea of Sadie's safety in mind and also the safety of the public, uh, we uphold the decision of um, animal control. Anybody else going to add anything? I just want to emphasize this. This is not a euthanasia type case. This dog will be petted out to an appropriate uh, family or appropriate uh, person that has a, a large land, a large property for him to, for her to, to run. <coughs> um, so just keep that in mind. All right, this oral decision will be followed by a written decision.